as LL Cool J said, don't call it a comeback. We've been here for years. The Road Warriors are back at Scotiabank Arena. Welcome to Live from Morning Skate, presented by FanDuel. Becky Keller, the gold medalist. I am Scott Willits. Um, whoa, what an absolute great road trip. I don't know where to start. There are so many things to talk about. We can get into Mitch. We're going to get into Mitch. We can talk about Big Pop. We can talk about William Nylander. We can talk about the captain. We can talk about the D-line. But <laughs> We can talk about the goaltending. But I think what we like the most is the fact that this team is playing as a full unit. Well, yeah, and you know what? There is so much to talk about. Just spin the little wheel, see where it lands. But what I like is that we sat here a month ago talking about they just came home from a road trip and the difference that we saw from that road trip to this road trip. I'm going to start with goal scoring. Yep. And they scored Why not? seven to eight. That's the fun area, right? right? Yeah, exactly. They scored 17 goals on this road trip, and that was led eight goals by your big four guys. Right? Obviously, Mitch, we know what he's been doing. Matthews has gotten on the scoreboard. Tavares, Nylander, those guys really led the way you know and just coming home off of a really great good solid team effort yeah three goals from Mitchie uh two goals from Austin three goals from Willie one goal from JT the big boys are absolutely producing and I like how they went into New Jersey and said okay hey guys the 16 winning winning streak that's coming to an end here the big boys are in the building um when you talk about Mitchie um this is unbelievable, the 17-point streak that he's on. Um, it seems like he can do anything. Put him with JT. Put him with Austin Matthews. Put him anywhere. And the ice time, you talk about a 200-foot player, he seems like a 400-foot player. And right now he's proven that he's arguably one of the top five best players in the NHL. He is one of the best players in the NHL, and I think he has been for years. We're seeing him do things all over the ice, and it's not just the goals and the assists, but he forechecks, he backchecks, he causes turnovers. And, and I think really what stands out about him is his vision, right? He sees the ice so well, stuff that you wouldn't even see if you were sitting in the stands. And then, of course, there's his ability to maneuver on the ice. To me, what stands out about him, too, is his, his edge work. The is true? Yeah, yeah he can go into traffic. Yeah. You think he's got no space to maneuver, and next thing you know, he's tight turned out. One thing about Mitch Marner that I don't think a lot of people know is he's a true leader. Um, he's the last person uh, coming out of the locker room. He's giving everybody the high fives. He's always around the ice. He's the, he's the guy who's always kind of the loudest and funniest one in the room. And you've seen him step up to his media, uh, uh, like what, what he has to do with the media, and he's really kind of taken this team on his back and ran with it, and you love, love to see it. And that brings us to the big poppy. And big poppy, Mr. 60 goal scorer, heart winner last year. Um, it looks like the NHL better be ready because our boy looks like he's ready to roll. Yeah, he's heating up again for sure. And, you know, he'd had goals. We talked about him a little while ago. He's been scoring. Most of them were on the power play, but he started to put pucks in again, five on five. He had two beautiful goals, last two games of this road trip. And it was just typical Austin Matthews style. Yeah. Gets the puck in the slot. He's got that quick release. He changes the angle of the shot, hard for goalies to read, and he puts the puck away. Just taking a look over at uh, Morning Skate, and it looks pretty good for our boy Nick Robertson. He's wearing a blue jersey. He's going to be in the lineup. You love Nick Robertson. You're always <laughs> trying to get him in the lineup. What are you exci excited for? I tonight? do because he can shoot the puck. I'd love to see him get the opportunity to use that shot. You know, if he gets in close, he gets a puck on his stick that he can put the puck away. So nice to see him back in the lineup. And we saw TJ Brody out on the ice before the guys uh, going for a skate today. So things are looking good uh, for his return as well. Just strength on strength. Uh, the defense gets better. The offense keeps getting better. And our goaltending looks fantastic it's good to be back home at Scotiabank Arena okay that brings us to our fan duel first goal of the game okay so Becky when at the game here our game ops crew we all do a bet who scores first and I picked JT for the last two times and I have come up <laughs> in the bank buddy lots of lots of lots of money I've been winning over here everybody's getting a little fed up with me um, however I can't do it <laughs> with our fan duel first goal of the game with me and you so I'm gonna let you go first and then I gotta right. go pick second you, all right a little bit got? of a hot take alert I got two predictions on this okay, one. okay oh wait see you always do this I do because you, I'm gonna you, you're always supposed to pick one but well, if you want to pick two go ahead no no go I got one guy go ahead Becky you, it's your world go ahead <laughs> it is <laughs> I got one guy, I got I got two takes on this. Rasmus Sandin, now you might think he just scored his first goal of the season against Detroit. I think Lightning's going to strike twice. And my other take will be it's a power play goal. We've seen him take Riley's spot when Riley's out of the lineup. He doesn't mind shooting the puck from the top of the point. Yeah. I think he's going to shoot. That means other hot take. It's going to be a power play goal against the hottest penalty kill in the league. Wow. Not only are you picking Rasmus Santin, I'm but you're picking it on the it. power play. I'm you're being it, very specific over here. I should take you to Vegas if this works, okay? Um, I'm always good know, for I, a trip to Vegas. I, I like that you picked Rasmus Santin just because I thought there was a full 360 moment, the fact that 
He scored in Detroit. And that's kind of where his career kind of went off a little bit when Mike Babcock took him out of the lineup after he got absolutely rocked. Maybe, what was that, two years ago, I think? Um, so it was good to see him kind of make amends there in Little Caesars Arena. Okay. AM 34. All right, I'm just, I'm just doing it. I haven't picked him at all this year. You always say that your kids are always just yelling at you that you don't pick the leading goal scorer, 60. Yeah, Austin Matthews, uh, 60 goals last year. There is something in his game. He's got his swagger back. The wrist shot looks like the wrist shot is back. I'm digging my boy from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm looking forward to him having a pretty big night. You know what? A pretty big road trip was Mr. Matt Murray, the Thunder Bay boy, looks like a number one, a true number one, and you know Leaf Nation just loves it. Well, he was awesome on that road trip, yeah. and he hasn't lost in regulation since he's come back from his injury. And you see him battling in the crease, making first saves, making second saves, and doing what we've talked about before, which is giving his team an opportunity to win. A 938 save percentage, that's pretty elite. Uh, you know, they just need him to continue to make the saves that need to be made in the moments that they need them giving them the opportunity uh, to stay in games and win games. And let's be honest, they don't make posts like they used to. Everybody, the, the, the elephant in the room with these post things. Listen, Matt Murray's a big guy. That's One thing, what it is. It's the post. Oh, yeah, it's the post. <laughs> okay, I just want to, like, just dwell on Matt Murray just a little bit. At the beginning of the season, the first game against Ottawa, what I didn't like about his game is he looked kind of small and he was going out a little too far and you saw that you know the game winning goal against Montreal he was kind of doing the you know he was kind of uh, I don't know sprawling out way up above his crease however in the last uh, five games he's looked bigger in that when a uh, goalie looks bigger in that well, uh, just talk about from a from an offensive player's perspective just what that is what well, that does to you there's obviously less room to shoot you, yep. you don't see as much <laughs> as he was getting that low to the ice you're right he was getting low to the ice getting his head down a little low exposing a little bit more of the net so he has been out he has been big you know he's got that big equipment big shoulder pads he takes yep. up a lot of the net he's sitting taller uh yet you're right makes a big difference for a shooter let's talk about tonight's game uh san jose kind of fighting a little bit some would say that they're kind of maybe looking for the number one draft pick but it's still a good team and last time we played them uh, they kind of surprised us a little bit uh when you think about San Jose, you think about two players, really, Logan Couture and Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson hasn't been the Eric Carlson that we remember from Ottawa, but he's still, uh, he, he can still dominate a game when he wants to. Yeah, and he seems to be back on track a little bit more to his Ottawa days, showing us why he won the Norris Trophy a couple times. He can distribute the puck. He can break pucks out of the zone. And, and we know he loves to jump in offensively. He's leading their team in points right now. He's kind of like a forward a little bit on the ice, yeah. a fourth forward. And if you're the Leafs going into a game like this, you know that. When he's on the ice, you know you got to come back five guys through the neutral zone because it's going to be a four-man attack. Uh, let's talk about our power play. Not really the greatest on the road trip, which was kind of funny because we were just putting up points and putting up points but seems to be a little stale right now what do the boys need to do to get back on track well against the best penalty kill in the league I think there's a few things that you need to do really well which is you need to move the puck quickly north south east west you got to catch them out of rotation and then you can't be afraid to put pucks on net and just go battle and that's what we saw on the Nylander goal against Detroit is that Rasmus Sandin just throws a puck on net good low shot get the rebound battle create a little bit of chaos and that may lead to your opportunities just uh finishing off with talking about our defensive group um sandine one goal as we mentioned uh Lilligrand, one assist and hall this is all since the riley injury and my favorite quote g ordano <laughs> as michael bunton says what can you say about this defensive unit well to start with i think it's been an entire team buy-in to play good team defense which is helping the defensemen out a lot and a bit of a shout out too to a guy like mac hollowell coming in First time ever in the NHL on this road trip. Uh, simplifies his game, steps in, and does a really nice job uh, for the Leafs. But you get Giordano and Hall. Now, I talked about coming back from the last road trip. Things were a little bit different. A guy like Hall was kind of struggling. We've seen him elevate his game, simplify his game as well. And he's been tough to play against, right? The big, long stick. He breaks up plays, takes the body, blocks shots. So those are the kind of little things that this decor is doing. Hall specifically, and Giordano is just amazing. So I don't, I, there's so much I could say about Becky, him. Becky, it's G or <laughs> That's right. That's how you say it. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, to uh, do a little kind of Q and A with Brendan Shannon and Jason Spezza, and one thing that we talked about was Boris Salmon and just uh, what we, you know, the presentation that we did here and just how emotional it was. And um, his passing happened way too quickly. And um, tonight we're going to honor him. I think it feels like it's been already like it's been a week, right? And 
it's just the fact that he was here and gone so quickly and a great guy. I have so many stories with Boris Hamann, just lucky enough to be friends with him. And tonight we get to honor him. Any, any memories that you, that you want to pass about Boris Hamann and what he meant to you, the king? Yeah, I mean, just such a great player and a class act. And I think the big thing that stands out to me, and it's been talked about so much, is him stepping on the ice at Maple Leaf Gardens as a Swede in his Swedish jersey and getting a standing ovation. I mean, to me, that's impactful. That's, um, and that's something that, that has always sort of stuck with me. Yep, he will definitely be missed and he'll always be loved in Leafland. Okay, uh, this has been Live from Morning Skate, uh, presented by FanDuel. Uh, of course, Puck Drop is at 7 o'clock tonight. You can catch it on Sportsnet. And with Joe and Jim on the Fan 590 for Becky Keller, I'm Scotty Willits. As always, go Leafs go.